Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. Every week on this program, I have a different guest and we talk about different programs, services, healthcare issues that are going to be relevant to you and your family. I've got a great guest on the program today, so I hope you'll stay tuned and join us right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Jason Edgeworth, who's an application analyst. Did I get that right? You did, you did. For the next gen EMR. Now that's a lot of big words, so we're gonna explain Wonderful. to our viewers what that means. Well, I'm excited about being here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the next gen EMR is the application that we use to record all of the electronic medical records for any of the ambulatory practices. So any of the doctor's offices that are associated with Kingman Regional. So outpatient, pretty much. Uh, pretty much, okay. and, um, and me as well as a couple of other people are application analysts we support these uh, software make sure that the software is working properly to record the data uh, for every patient on their record now this is all kind of brought about by actually this has been behind the scenes going on for a long time it yes. didn't just happen this no week, no even this year <laughs> that's correct the, the hospital actually has been working uh, for the past four years on generating uh, well the the government's mandated that we had to have certain uh, software in place to record the data for meaningful use which is okay. going to be a buzzword that's going to be coming out a lot people more. are going to hear that more and oh, more yes. as we move oh, forward yes. and uh, for the last four years the hospital has been very diligent about coming up with a software that not only met the needs for the government mandate but also would um, help our doctors record their patient information uh, with their patients and give them the accurate data that they need to have uh, involved patients in their own health. Well, and it really is cool. I mean, whether it's short term, but the long term, that's going to happen with all of this, right? I mean, it's pretty yeah. awesome. What's yeah, I mean, <laughs> when, when we think about the that the government really wants a patient to be able to go anywhere in the United States and be able to have access to their old information right. um, and have doctors be able to, where before you'd wait for a fax and wait to get a, a, a something sent to you by mail, uh, now uh, with the involvement of uh, health information exchanges and with patient portals, uh, patients, doctors have access to data from anywhere in the United States. Um, that kind of flexibility is really exciting a lot uh, for the patient. I mean, to be able to access their information at any moment uh, is kind of exciting. It is, because I don't think people even realize if you think about, okay, so I'm gonna go on vacation. I'm driving from Arizona to Maine, opposite end of the country, we'll just say. And along the way, something I'm either in a car accident or I start having chest pain, whatever. You go into an emergency room in a hospital where you've never been before. You don't know anybody there. The doctors don't know you or anything else, but they will be able to pull up your information. But there's safeguards in place as well, right? It's not like yes, I mean, it, it's not like it's an open vault where, hey, I can go in and take <laughs> yeah, anyone's let me hear information. Jamie Taylor. Um, let me see. With, with the appropriate um, authorizations from the patient, Mm -hmm. um, the doctors would be able to have electronic versions of um, radiology charts, lab results, uh, doctor's visits, um, simply by accessing a health exchange um, or a patient portal. Uh, and with authorization from the patient, obviously, mm -hmm. that there is going to be this information that's electronically on websites or on secure websites that will allow them to do that. But like you said, in a moment's notice, when you're in the emergency room, um, being able to access important information about maybe your diabetes or maybe your cardiology concerns that are already out there. Um, doctors won't have to do it blindly and, and order tests that 
may or may not be relevant. Right, and that's, yeah, or that could have mm. da even damaging effects to issues that you already had previously. Well, and especially, we live in a small town, so right, Kingman is not a huge <laughs> metropolitan area, right. but uh, on your way to Maine, you're in Chicago, Illinois, uh, they will have the same access to this small town as, as they're having right, in the big it city. Just, it lowers the playing field, yeah. or equals the equalizes. That's the word I was looking for. The playing field for everyone. And I think that the government really wants to have their patients um, throughout the United States be an informed citizenry mm -hmm. about their own health. And they see the benefits of having that information readily available through a patient portal. Or and, uh, electronically a doctor can go into a health exchange sure. and be able to get that information. Well and I think that's important and again I'm going to maybe back up for a second. I think it's different than how it used to be. In the old days, insurance companies, all those, they really weren't caring or weren't involved in your staying healthy. Because the only time they got money or that, you know, was when you were sick. I, in fact, I even, I remember talking with Ryan Kennedy when I first came to work here at KMC right. about health care and when the campus first went tobacco free. And we were talking about different things the hospital could do to help our patients and our community deal with smoking. And it came up that, you know, insurance doesn't pay for someone to quit smoking. Right. And I was like, why? Why, why wouldn't they want to help someone quit smoking? And this is going to be, it may be shocking to people, but the truth of the matter is because the insurance company wasn't the one that was going to benefit. Because the statistics show that most people back then um, changed insurance companies every three to five years. You know, they changed jobs. We're a very mobile society nowadays, so they'd move, they changed jobs, change insurance companies. So why would the insurance company want to put out the money to help you quit smoking today when the fact that you're going to live longer and be healthier, they're not going to reap the benefits for it? Oh. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> you know, I, I think about the fact that um, even in my own personal life, I've had family members that are on multiple medications. Mm -hmm. None of them are, are cross-referenced to see, well, will this medication hurt right. them if they prescribed? Um, we live in a faster society now. We don't have to worry about, well, I go to this doctor for my cardiology, I go to this doctor for my diabetes, and now the doctors can look at each other's notes and say, yeah, I don't want to prescribe this because I know that that could cause a problem right. in another area. And, um, you know, when, when we look at our, our patients, um, it's not only just for our doctors to make decisions, it's for our patients to make decisions too. Wow, I need to maybe think about quitting smoking mm -hmm. or I need to change my diet for right. diabetes. And right. our hospital offers other tools, not just physical care, but exactly. also, um, you know, dietitians that can help with that right. or, or diabetes, physical therapy. Right. All of so, those things, right. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it has changed a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of the mandates make you, are going very fast. I mean, four years is not a long time when you're talking no. about some of these massive changes uh, and requirements of our hospital and other hospitals in our area, in the area to, um, to accommodate for our patients. So that's another reason why the patient portal is going to be so important to our patients, to our community, as we're moving forward. It's going to give them the tool they need to take control, if you would, of their own health. And it's kind of exciting. It is, and it's, it's really the bridge, uh, one more connection between the doctor and the patient right. and, and ultimately that relationship is probably one of the most important relationships that a person's going to have. Yeah. Uh, the patient portal uh, is going to help bridge that gap um, so that uh, doctors are more involved with their patients and patients are more involved with their own health. Well and I th I'm excited for KRMC because if you think about it uh, already I know my beautician can send me a text that says oh don't forget you have an appointment tomorrow at two o'clock you know whatever. Um, and now our doctors are going to, offices are going to be eventually to that point. And one of the big things about the patient portal is the communication piece. Um, with the patient portal, the patient will have the ability to um, request an appointment. Uh, they'll be able to request information, specifically the doctor. They can send the doctor a message or the doctor's office a message, mm -hmm. and the MA or the doctor themselves can respond. Uh, we also have the capabilities of requesting a refill. When you are done with the refill, you don't have to call and wait for the doctor to come 
um, you know, we'll call, call you back. back. You can or... go right online to the patient portal, make the request for the medication, and the doctor can process it through electronically. Approve it and then send it on. Exactly. Wow. So uh, communication is going to be a really big, important part of the por uh, patient portal. That's awesome, yeah. and and it's you know it's the future, and it's here, it's happening now. Well, and you know a, a lot of the, a lot of the doctors will also, or the patients will have the ability also to find out about, uh, I went in for a visit, what did my patient plan say? What did uh, my documentation say? They have access to be able to access that information. Um, they can actually look at their lab results. So if they go into the lab and get lab results, uh -huh. those will be on the patient portal. Well, I, and I was just thinking, I know, like for myself, very easy to go into the doctor's office, you go in even just for your regular yearly checkup and you have a list of things you're going to want to remember to talk to him about and then you get busy talking about other stuff and you get home and you go, oh shoot, I forgot to tell or what did he say, what was I supposed to do? And so this is again that communication piece, right? You'll yes. be able to go back and say, what, did, what is my plan like you yeah. were saying? And, and Yes, patients can call in to their patient, to the doctors. Uh, the, this patient portal won't stop that communication. Right. But the reality is, in today's world, we do spend more time on our computers. We yeah. do spend more time in There's the privacy of our homes <laughs> trying to get the information we right. want. Um, this patient portal can answer a question or ask a question to the doctor um, through the patient portal, sent directly to the doctor's office. They can respond right back to the doctor. Uh, one of the other things that's nice is uh, for our parents. You know, now not only do you have access to your information, but you can register your children so oh. that their information is also on the patient portal. So instead of having to call the pediatric doctor oh. for them and then call your doctor for information, all of it can be accessed through oh, the wow. patient portal. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. So you yeah. almost have like a, a family plan. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, one of the, the things I like about the patient portal, it's a very simple um, enrollment. It oh. is not a difficult enrollment. It's um, it's very very uh, pain free in my opinion. Um, and you know when, when when patients have something that they can get on pretty quickly, and they can have access to all that information, I have a feeling that it'll start off slow and then it will build upon it's itself gonna... because they'll say, "Wow, this is really easy." And, and having access to that information is is so easy. Why not do it? Yeah. We're going to come back after these messages because I think we've got a lot more to talk about from that. Wonderful. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. I think um, before I forget, I don't have to download like any kind of special software or anything. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Jason Edgeworth. Thanks again for being on the show, Jason. My pleasure. And you're an application analyst with NextGen. I got that right again. Yes, you did. Yes, yes you did. Good. Um, here at KMC and NextGen, just so we'll remind everyone from before the break, we it's the software the hospital has put in place that allows our doctor's offices to gather the information about our patients Right? Yes, and that's then perfect. it shares, it has the ability to share that information with each other, with other physicians. Yes, yes. So that they can, so my cardiologist can see what my family practice has given me and make sure they're not going to, those medications aren't going to sure. interact poorly. Okay. Yes. So we talked about the fact that that was kind of a, it's a mandate, part of the meaningful use. Yes. And everybody's mm -hmm. going to want to get familiar with those terms because sure. it's coming down the pike. But the patient portal now is getting ready. We're going to roll that out when? Uh, it's going to be sometime probably before the end of July. Okay. Or excuse me, the end of June. Okay, so of June, end yes. of June, early July mm -hmm. is the plan. Yes. And what that's going to mean is a patient then will be able to come to azkrmc.com, the hospital's website. Yes. There will be a button or something there. We're not quite sure what that's going to look like yet, but that will clearly identify a patient portal. They can click there, and then they're going to. It'll walk them through logging in. Right. That, okay. uh, the process will. will they'll go to the office, uh, whatever doctor's okay. office they belong to, and um, when they make the request at the doctor's office that yes, I would like to sign up for the patient portal, the doctor's office will produce a PIN number. Oh, see, I didn't realize yes. that. Okay. So. Um, 
when they produce the PIN number, uh, that they can the patient can take the PIN number and go onto the website, kazkrmc.com. Okay. There will be a link to the patient portal. Okay. The registration is very simple. It's name, address, email address, contact information, and then it will also ask for the PIN. The, okay. the PIN number that's assigned to them. Okay. Once they've put in the PIN number, uh, they will get a, a, an email requesting the verification to make sure that the information they put in is accurate. Okay. And then once they're done with that, they are now registered in the patient portal. All of the information for that, pa that visit and then all the visits going forward will start to populate into that patient's uh, record on the patient portal. So it's almost like that PIN number is giving them a file folder, if you would, for nothing <laughs> better, that all of their stuff is going to go in and then they're going to be able to go and look at it. Right. It, it, it's The PIN number and the registration is like any other web-based um, account that people okay. have right, right. now. Um, it gives them access to the patient portal, which will then have access to their medical records. It will also give them access to be able to um, access their doctors with communication, okay. uh, whether we it's uh, re that re medical break, refills. Right? Right. Um, it's a very easy process. Um, now, some people might say, I'm, I, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if I um, want to share, wanna right. share <laughs> that information. And I think it's a valid point. Um, one of the mandates that the government has put out there for these type of companies is obviously a very strong focus on security. We are talking Good. about people's, people's medical records. In order to get uh, credentialed and certified to be a provider of a patient portal, you have to meet certain government guidelines. One of those guidelines is security. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the company that we chose, was their name was IntelliChart, and they were chosen specifically because uh, they do meet the criteria mandated by the government for um, what a patient portal will look like. Okay. Um, but we like them also because of the ease of registration. Because really, that, that's the thing that can scare a lot of patients is, well, oh, sure. it takes me 45 minutes to register. I don't want to do it. I'm not very computer savvy. Well, yeah, um, and we do have a lot of folks like that in Kingman that aren't, I'm not, and I don't mean that as a slam on Kingman, but we have a higher uh, senior population that may not have been that computer literate. Although yeah. a lot of us baby boomers are coming up there, and we're pretty good now. So, <laughs> well, and, and I think that it, it's it's the way I look at it is for myself. It's like I'm reg I'm registered with my bank to mm -hmm. view my bank information. Right. That's secured. It's, you know that's secured to me. Uh, this patient portal is set up exactly the same way, so that the most important and very personal information that's about you and your medical record mm -hmm. is secure to you. And that's important. I think um, before I forget. I don't have to download like any kind of special software or anything? That's a great question actually. No, it's a web-based program. Okay. So uh, the link will be put on azkrmc.com okay. and uh, the link will take you right to the secure That's website. Seamless, really. You'll use your username and password that you establish and then you have access to your information right there. Great. Now, and going back to that security, I know that we all have, and we've heard horror stories, you know, like with targets getting hacked mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So you talked about how IntelliChart has put good security measures in place. But sharing that information as well, nowadays, um, insurance as we change jobs or those kind of things, or we decide we want to get, we're getting older, we want more life insurance, whatever. Will those kind of businesses be able to access my information? Um, we do have certain arrangements, partnerships with that information, but this portal is basically the communication of um, documentation from the hospital or from the physician uh -huh. to the patient. So it's just at some point, point we've talked about maybe um, adding a feature of billing. Being able, you'd be able to see our statements, the statements that we generate as the hospital, right. um, but the billing department still would handle all the claims that would go okay. out and come back in. Um, explanation of benefits are usually seen on the insurance website. Patient portal wouldn't have that kind of information. I guess what I was thinking more of though was like if I'm going out to buy life insurance, can that life insurance company access my information and go, oh, we just saw you had a heart attack five years ago, we're not going to insure you. You know, you know what that, I mean? That's a good question. Usually insurance companies get a waiver 
signed by the patient that saying that they, they can, can review that. people's information. <laughs> Normally that information comes from a doctor's office. Okay. They right. would get the request from okay. the doctor's office um, or they would do their own screening and then take so that it's information gonna be from there. it's going to basically the same as it's always yeah. been. Yeah, really the, 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 the patient portal will not be giving out any information that hasn't already been authorized by okay. the, the patient. And, and, and that information is really going to be provided by our hospital only. I right. mean, the the okay. majority of the information is coming from our hospital. Um, like I said, we have looked at maybe trying to add a billing portion to mm -hmm. it um, where they can pay their bills bill, online. Right? The, the capability is there to do that. We haven't decided whether that's going to be when, additionally right. added now or in the future. Okay. But, um, but yeah, most of the information that's going to be on there um, would not be anything different than if the insurance company requested it from your doctor's okay. visit. So okay. it wouldn't be like they have access now beyond anything that's not authorized. Okay. And that I think that is kind of a concern that I've heard people say, and um, again, that it's just hard to fathom how my information, I'm going to be able to get on there and see all my information, but nobody else can. It's like, it's that yeah. safe and secure. It's, it's pretty cool. It's the same as your bank account. I mean, okay. when you log into your bank account, right. you don't get to see my information. Right. Uh, those security play. The, and obviously the government makes it, I mean, it's a pretty serious, it's a pretty serious concern for them. Sure. Um, because they put these websites and these portals in uh, very high scrutiny about making sure you certify to that you can provide the information okay. with security uh, and uh, so top priority. It's not just talk, it's Yeah, you have to get your yeah. credential by the federal government. So um, that was one of the things we liked about this particular company because of their ability to become um, registered with the government, mm -hmm. but also ease of use. Great. Well, and I know as we move forward now, as we get closer to the rollout, we're talking about we're going to be putting flyers and handouts at all the different doctor's offices that's going to explain the process, what they're going to do, um, educating our doctor's offices about a answering those questions. That's a big thing as well. Right. Um, and so, but their physician offices really who they're going to go to with their questions. If they you know, hear this or they're watching the program and they go, oh, that's really cool, I wanna know more, mm -hmm. they need to call the doctor's office, right? Right, I mean, the doctor is gonna be the relationship. Now, some of our patients go to several doctors. We've, we've, we are one practice in the eyes of, um, in, in the eyes of IntelliCharts. So okay. when you go to one and you sign in, you're now registered to all of them. You are? You are registered to all of them. Oh, Just wow. cause like in our system right now, our doctors can communicate within each other as long as they're within the next gen network. Wow. Uh, the same with the patient portal. You will be able to access uh, a certain doctor that you went to two weeks ago and then in the same visit uh, to the portal, you can go to the next doctor oh, uh, that cool. you've seen. So um, communication to each of those doctors is separate. It's not a one goes to everything. It's, you can okay. choose which doctor you want. Very so. good. Well, Jason, thank you for being on the show. I can't believe our time's up already because I know there's <laughs> probably more things we could talk well, about. And, and I'm really excited about the patient portal. And I know over the next couple of months, we'll have a lot more information and going out to the offices. And we can have you back on the program then. Wonderful. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks for joining us. I hope you learned something new and talk to your doctor about that patient portal. I'll see you next week with another great guest. <laughs>